I'm going to give another example of the architectural imagination at work. There's a very famous study by an architecture historian named Rudolf Wittkover called Architecture Principles in the Age of Humanism. And it's a study of every villa that the Italian architect Andrea Palladio ever built. So let's imagine that Wittkover went with his students. He probably visited all the villas in the northern part of Italy. He may have measured them. He and his students probably drew them. And what he began to realize is that the villas, as different as they were, had some deep structural diagram in common, some geometrical ordering system that was not always immediately apparent, but was latent uh, and could be discovered through these, this system, this uh, activity of measuring and drawing. Some of the villas were simple farmhouses. They were not decorated compared to the great urban villas in Italy. Others were lavishly decorated, both on the inside and on the exterior. Vidkover didn't look at any of that. Some of the villas were made of different materials, stucco. Some actually were made of more precious materials like stone. Vidkover didn't see any of that. All Vidkover cared about was this common diagram, this template. And out of that template, he devised or he imagined the geometrical essence of the Palladian villa. And in his final diagram, you can see it here, he draws that diagram. This is the architectural imagination at work. There are several things we can get for this. First of all, appearance is important. Uh, appearance, representation, but also something deeper than surface appearance. There's also a deeper diagrammatic structure. Second of all, repetition is important. Each of these villas have something in common, but they're all variations on a single common theme. And third is the relationship between that template, that diagram, and what we might want to call the architectural understanding, how we understand that. We can think of it this way. When, when Vidkover draws that diagram, there's a, when we, and when we look at that diagram, there's a kind of harmonious resonance, there's a kind of vibration in our minds between that visual image and, and something that we're starting to understand, some idea of a villa type that we're starting to understand. And here is how the imagination, which we see in that diagram, in that drawing, <clears throat> bridges the gap between the raw sense data of perception and the architectural understanding itself. Now we can be precise about the imagination. It's one part of a three-part system. At, at the lowest level, we might say, is our sensory experience, our sight, our touch of, of the materials of a building, even maybe the sounds of the building, or even maybe even the smells of the stone and the stucco of the building. But those arrive as raw sense data. They're unencoded, they're, they're, they're unprocessed. And the understanding, which is at the highest level, knows nothing of those raw sense data. It has, it has no way of, of scanning. It has no way of uh, matching up that sense data with anything that the understanding can understand. That's where the imagination comes in. The imagination is the third thing that operates in the space between the sense data and the perceptions of the building and the architectural understanding. And the work of the imagination, what it has the capacity to do is schematize. Remember that diagram of Vitkover. He actually draws the deep structure of those villas and that schematization, that deep structure, that the understanding can scan. The understanding has templates already available that it can match to that geometrical schema. Now, you might even want to say that because that schema is so rigorous and because it is repeated, it has the appearance or it, it, it seems that it has universal validity. And indeed, Vitkover thought that the Palladian diagram did have universal validity. We could think of it this way, that when the imagination presents its schema to the understanding, it sets us on the path toward knowledge. And, and whatever, whatever knowledge is, it will have something to do with this interaction of the understanding and the, and the imagination. 
the important thing for us is that this is a specific kind of architectural knowledge. It's come from uh, uh, the experience of architectural sense data. It's been schematized into an architectural diagram and the architectural understanding has scanned it. In some ways you might understand the imagination and the understanding as opposed. The imagination is temporal, the understanding is universal. The imagination is multiple, while the understanding is singular. But the understanding is also passive. It receives the imagination's input. The imagination is active. So we might say that the imagination organizes the sensuous manifold according to organizing principles that can re be received by the understanding. And here we have the idea that architecture produces knowledge.